cashing out with a wedge is a very powerful asset to have in your tool set. So I have a scene here that I have been playing around with for some time. This is the actual shot that I have. In order to dial in the settings for this, I've been using this wedge tool that's been given to us by side effects in the uh, labs. To see how this works, I'm gonna go ahead and run this a little bit earlier in my tree. So let's go ahead and back up. I'm gonna um, go into the particle simulation. Uh, since my particle simulation is a lot less dense to render, and I'm only gonna be doing that, say the first, oh, let's just do 50 frames to kind of showcase this. So, uh, but as you can see, I've, I've run a couple of um, sims right over here, and I'm gonna showcase how I actually do this. If you could see what I have here is five different iterations of this tornado. And I ended up selecting this middle one, but I've been doing dozens and dozens of iterations until I get the look that I actually like. And you'll see that this middle one is the one that I went with uh, for the final product. So how am I actually doing this? Well, what, what if you come over here to the actual node itself, you'll see that we have, uh, it looks just like a regular cache node, but we have all of these extra attributes that we can create down here. And basically what this does is says, okay, let's go ahead and run an iteration at this range. And then we're gonna run an iteration uh, stepped up higher. Since I'm doing five wedges, it'll go to a fifth step higher here. And the same thing on all of these attributes and I ran them all the same. Now, some tips when you decide to wedge, I would actually try to minimize the amount of attributes that you're doing so that you can have more control over the changes that you have, unless you know what that change is gonna do. So uh, let's go ahead and set this up and I'll show you guys how this works. Um, the first thing I like to do, let me go ahead and escape and let's reset my sim. Make sure I'm on frame one, by the way, especially when you're, uh, uh, especially when you're going to be cashing out from a .NET. Now, also be aware that if you're going to be doing these smoke sims or volume sims or flip sims, you'll need to actually cash later in the tree. You won't be able to cash directly out of the .NET. You'll need to do a DOP import fields and bring in the fields that you're using. Um, in a later video, when we get into volumetrics on this channel, I will be talking about this. But anyway, so I have this .NET and um, coming out of this .NET is just simply is this right here, um, is my condensation funnel for this tornado shot that I'm working on, which is some attributes that we can manipulate. Most of the attributes to manipulate this tornado are actually located inside of here. Um, but I've written this pop fop here so that I can come in and play with attributes on the fly. So let's just go ahead and run a simple wedge where we manipulate one of these attributes and then we can actually see the live difference here. So the first thing I like to do is I like to drop a transform node this way I can wedge everything together um, when I cache and then it'll just they'll just show up here rather than having to import them and transform them, they'll already be transformed for me. And you'll see that I can just set up a little filing system here like that. So let's go ahead and just wire in this transform and I'm not gonna do anything with this transform just yet. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do, let's get rid of this here so I have some real estate to work with. I'll put that in its own and I'll just minimize that for now. Then let's go ahead and type in labs cache and you'll see there's a labs file cache node. Come up here and I want to give this a name. We're gonna call this uh, tutorial wedge cache. Make sure that your project is properly set. So if I come over here, you'll see that I'm in my VFX projects, Tornado 2024, and then the Geo. And then uh, in here, this is where it will uh, save using this name up here. Uh, there's a couple of caveats that we need to uh, take into consideration here. So when we do this, the first thing I like to do is come over here and check off the simulation. And then I want to come over here to a scheduling and I want to schedule one batch at a time. And the reason for this is because if I don't click this on, it's going to try and cache everything out at the exact same time. And that's just not useful. Also, just a caveat, you actually have to turn off simulation, come over here, click this, then come back and actually click simulation back on. It's just um, it's just a workaround for uh, a, an issue that we have uh, when we come to wedging. But anyway, so once that's set up, and you've done that. Let's just go ahead and turn on wedging. And I'm gonna run for this uh, this one just three wedges to show you how it works. Typically, I'll run anywhere up to five. My machine can handle it. The disk space usage using wedges can get very high very fast. Anyways, when I hit the wedges, you'll see I get these three dots down here. And this is each wedge, each iteration that we're gonna have down here. Now, what I can do is I can start setting attributes. So the first attribute that I actually wanna set is a move attribute. Let's go ahead and drop that down. And uh, we get a couple of options here. We can do an automatic, we can do a custom range, we can do a random sample. 
The one I use the most uh, out of this one is the custom range. And basically what this says is on the first iteration, you're gonna use zero. On the last iteration, you can use one. So if I were to use this one right now with three wedges, the first iteration will, will have a move of zero, then we'll have a 0.5, and then we'll have a one. What I'm doing here is I want to create some separation. Um, and I'm just gonna type in 60 here. Actually, what we could do is probably do 100. Yeah, that's gonna be about right here. So that's not too bad. Um, I mean, I might do more, but uh, we'll do 100. So you'll have zero, 50, and then 100. And how am I gonna use this? Well, this is an attribute now. So if I come up here to transform, I wanna move the X axis over uh, to see what I mean. So if you look at this and I just move this over, so this would be 50, that's where the next one would be. In order to tell Houdini how to actually maneuver this attribute, we just simply have to type in at move. When the cache happens as it's piping through these, this tree system here, uh, it's gonna run into this attribute and say, oh, I need to take an iteration from another attribute here that doesn't exist yet, but it's smart enough to know that it exists here. And I'll say, okay, zero is the number we're gonna use for this iteration. And then the next one, it's gonna know, okay, 50. And then the last one, it's gonna be 100. So this is how I actually get all three of them on at the same time. It's just a workaround and it's just a hack that I do. But let's give it an actual attribute to change here. Let's say, for instance, I wanna change uh, orbit force parameter here. But I like 60, I just wanna see what it looks like with uh, with some differences. So let's go ahead and create an attribute here and we'll call this uh, orbit, okay? The name really doesn't matter as long as you remember it. Don't give it super complex names because then you have to go in and type it out. So, uh, but I'm gonna give it orbit and then we're gonna do a custom range. And what I wanna do, is let's say, I wanna go up above orbit. What happens when I go higher than this? So what we can do is type in, okay, zero. And let's say I wanna go to 80. So then what I'll do is I'll type in 20. So now that I have this, I'll come over here to the orbit force parameter and I will just simply type plus at orbit. And you'll see that it goes green. And what is it saying? It's saying, hey, on the first iteration, you'll go 60 plus zero. On the second one, you'll go 60 plus 10. And then on the third one, you'll go 60 plus 20, giving us 80. And so that's set up and that's ready to go. I have all my files here set, okay? And it's gonna do one through 250. And so what I'm gonna do now, um, just to go ahead and get these iterations going and show how this works, we're gonna come over here now and hit save in background. And then we'll save and continue. And you'll see that you'll have a three here and the wheel starts to turn and it is now cooking. So I'm gonna let this cook for a while and then we'll come back and then we will see what this wedge uh, gave us. Okay, so we're back and the wedge is done. So let's go check out what we got. So to do this, I'm just gonna drop in a file node. And if you had all the saving uh, properties done properly, you should be able to navigate quite easily to uh, where you need to go. So you'll notice if I come up here, there'll be a tutorial wedge cache, version one. And then here we have a W0, W1, W2. It stands for wedge zero, wedge one, wedge two. So let's take a look. We'll open that up. I'm just gonna type in a merge node. And let's flag that merge node. Let's do another file. And I'll just navigate to the second one. File here. And then last but not least, we'll grab this one. Cool. And so this is what we have here. And if I hit play, you'll see I have all three nodes and you'll see that the rotation changes this one has a much bigger orbit, giving us a larger uh, funnel here for the tornado. And then I simply can, you know, if I if I like one of these caches, I don't have to change it. I can just say, okay, this is my new file. And then we can just start going down from there. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Also, be sure to share some of your work here with me on both my X account, my Instagram, as well as here on YouTube. I love seeing your guys' work and I want to promote your work here in the near future. I'm cultivating a community where we can actually share each other's artwork and build each other up. So until next time, always be creative.